afternoon. Welcome to the Cupertino City Council special meeting. Today is April 13th, and um, if you are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam City Clerk, roll call please. Councilmember Chow. Here. Councilmember Fruin. Here. Councilmember Moore. Here. Vice Mayor Mohan. Here. Mayor Way. Here. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Um, we are going to move to postponements and order of the day. Do we have any postponements or? No, Mayor Way, thank you. All right, thank you. So we are moving to oral communications. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the council on any matter within the jurisdiction of the council, but not on the agenda for discussion, including information items. Madam City Clerk, do we have any cards? Yes, Mayor, so, so far in Community Hall, we have two blue speaker cards, one from Jennifer Griffin and one from Kathy Helgerson. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Jennifer. If you'd like to approach the podium. And how about on Zoom? Do we have anybody on Zoom? So far, I see no hands raised. Anyone wishing to speak under this item, please raise your hand in the next nine, nine minutes or submit your speaker card in Community Hall. All right, thank you. Um, good afternoon, City Council. This is an unusual time, but that's okay. Uh, lots of good stuff going on. Um, I wanted to start out today um, I, we've been talking about the Stockelmeyer House. Um, I keep bringing this up because to me, having a farmstead like that sitting there without being put to the use, which is what it was a farm, um, is very, very, to me, it's, it's a loss of history. I'm so glad that Cupertino's been able to secure the property. Nothing's going to happen to it. It is, it's a, it's a time capsule that's waiting to be unveiled. And um, I'm, I have a lot of curiosities about the farm and what Mr. Stockelmeyer was doing there. He evidently planted the orange orchard sometime, I believe, in the 30s. And it was a hobby farm uh, because we don't have really orange orchards in this part of California. They're more endemic in Southern California, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, I'm beginning to wonder why did he do that? He didn't have to plant. Uh, he, he could have planted apricots, cherries, prunes, et cetera, plums, um, other things that we knew grew well in the valley. But why did he choose oranges? I'm beginning to think that maybe because it was during the depression, he wanted to provide food for a lot of people that were out of work in the valley. Um, a lot of people had lost jobs all over California. If you have not read The Grapes of Wrath, I had to read it as a 16-year-old in high school. John Steinbeck showed the, the signs of the time. Um, maybe he just wanted to tinker with what was happening, what, what kinds of things could be grown in California. As I have spoken before, Thomas Jefferson at Monticello had a long history and correspondence with people from other countries, and they actually sent him seeds. Sometimes they would send trees, <laughs> and he tried to grow tropical items, a piece of fruit in the Piedmont of Virginia, which did not do well. Some things did not do well there, because it's very, very cold winters, ice storms, but yet he had the imagination to think that something like this could actually grow. He was very interested in what was going on in the world around him. And I don't know if anyone realizes this, but the Monticello Association just purchased 300 acres of land adjacent to Monticello that Jefferson, that Jefferson had actually given or sold to a French gentleman um, in the late 1700s after the Revolutionary War because he was going to establish a vineyard. That property has come back to the association and they're going to start regrowing it. I would like to know why that orange orchard's there. Let's do it, let's pursue it. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Next we have Kathy Helgerson followed by Peggy Griffin. 
And I see one hand raised on Zoom. Okay, um, I, you know, I don't know where to start. There's so many issues with the city. It's, it's we hold more meetings or something to address all these things. Okay, so um, one thing that I'm doing right now is working, trying to help. Uh, Valco situation is just sitting there. So what I did was I contacted the uh, Sand Hill Environmental Report um, consultant, okay? And he, he said he um, is working on this to find out what happened, all right? Uh, we need the letter, we need the report, and once that comes back and it's approved and everything, I guess by the city, then maybe they can start to build. I mean, this is what I'm waiting for because we're losing revenue here. And I guess we're, we, there's another issue with that. Okay, uh, with, with the revenue issue. Um, so I'll let you know, I'll call somebody next week at the city and, and see what I can find out. Um, Paul O'Sullivan, I guess, was supposed to be involved in all this and I sent him an email and you guys got it too, lots of information, okay. The other thing is, um, I would like to know if the city would like to start or get in touch with a think tank, a think tank company. Um, because what they do is they provide or can provide a safe forum to discuss sensitive city and county manager issues. The highly qualified format is an average avenue to dig deeper, tap into groups mindset and, and gain valuable insights for each um, county administrator and city manager. Okay, I uh, think tanks can work also with citizens, city staff, city council, and the public sector. I would also suggest that young people be brought into the arena who can provide their ideas progressively and in turn could become the city's next city council members. I think it's important to start working with young people. Um, I'm sure you hear this about everybody in the White House. They want younger people and Republicans and Democrats want younger people. So maybe it's start to groom these young people. Uh, it's really important because sometimes they just don't know what's going on. And I think it's time we start to educate them and also not just city manners, but county manners, state manner, uh, state situations, what's going on, and also the federal government. Last thing, um, we're still working on this homeless thing. You guys gotta do something about that lady over by Target. I don't know what to say. Um, there's a lot of spare buildings all over the place. Uh, Pizza Hut, um, what was that other one? Uh, the, the state place over there on uh, Danza Boulevard. Um, nothing's being built here, and you're losing revenue. And also, she was talking about the oranges and, the, and, and the, all that stuff. Uh, you guys are gonna be treating those orange trees. I'm against that. Um, that's a long story, and I, I can share that with some of the other people here. And thank you, um, Mayor, for those coffee meetings. <laughs> I really enjoyed them, okay? Yeah, she doesn't like it too. But I would like the city to pay for the coffee. <laughs> You're too nice, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Next we have Peggy Griffin. Peggy will be our final speaker in Community Hall. I'd like to use the overhead. Yes, it's, you should be able to just place it on. Okay. There you um, go. Can I zoom out? <coughs> that works. Um, good evening, Mayor Way, Vice Mayor Mohan, council members and staff. In pre pre preparing for tonight's I meeting, oops, now? Yes. Good evening, uh, Mayor Way, Vice Mayor Mohan, council members and staff. In preparing for tonight's meeting, I was looking at CIP projects and I accidentally looked at this one, and I am for microgrid, I'm for battery backup, but there's one sentence here. The project may also require the removal of some trees along the edge of the parking lot if they are tall enough to interfere with power generation. Any tree of value will interfere with power generation. Here is a map of this area. All these long, this is east, north, south, and west. There's a lot of trees. And I want you, when this project comes up for analysis, to ask really hard questions. This would destroy the look and feel of this area if all these big trees, you just put in the Regnart Creek Trail, you're gonna take all those trees out? So please look at this when it comes up and ask these hard questions. Maybe the solar panels, it, ideally it would be put on the buildings, but maybe they could move away from the trees. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Now we will move to 
Zoom. We have one commenter with their hand raised, Lisa Warren. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. So this is probably the only chance I'm going to be able to speak tonight or today because it's not tonight and I have a crazy busy commitment day for work. So I would just like to say I have a curiosity whether any of the council members will be needing to recuse themselves from the Apple project item. I asked that because, and I know you can't answer now, um, because two commissioners needed to do that when this came to planning commission. I won't be able to say my comments about Apple at the time, which is very unfortunate. And I do note that you have closed session items after this regular slash special meeting, which I'm not understanding why that would have taken place because there are a lot of people that would want to be here today that can't, but could have been here later because there's some pretty hot button items on this agenda. And I just question how a 4 p.m. meeting on a non-traditional council date, I know it's been known since early March, um, would have particular items on the agenda that it has where a lot of people are not able to attend, including myself today, unfortunately. So without going into agenda items, I guess that's really all I can say. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Mayor, I see no further hands raised or speaker cards. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. I will close the um, oral communications session and let's move to consent calendar. It's item one, two, three. Do we have any consent calendar that's being pulled? Yes, Mayor, we have one uh, council member Chow pulled item three regarding Sister City since you visit. Okay, so uh, now we have consent number one and two. May I have a motion to approve consent? Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to open it up to public comment for just one and two. If you have uh, comments for number three, please wait until it comes out in the uh, agenda, which will be after the action item. So public comment for action num uh, consent number one and two. Do you have any cards or raise hands? No, Mayor, not for items one or two. Okay, so I will close the uh, public comment for consent calendar one and two, and I would like to have a motion to approve it. I move to I move to adopt the consent calendar. Okay. Numbers, item Vice, numbers one and two. Vice Mayor Mohan moved, and may I have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Fruin. Any discussions? If not, let's vote by light. Mayor and Vice Mayor, please vote with your lights. Oh. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So we will move to public hearing. Uh, just know that consent number number three will be after number six, um, the action item. So I am going to open up the public hearing. The subject is considered the proposed development of a 282 and 320 square foot office building with a detached 213 and 080 square foot of parking structure and removal and replacement of 113 trees subject to a development permit, architectural and site approval and tree removal permit and exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act. So um, this applicant is Apple Inc. Um, the recommendation is right there on the agenda. So I'm going to open up for a staff presentation, please. Thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, so we have a presentation on the project for you, um, prepared by uh, John Matier, senior planner, and assisted by assistant uh, director from community and development um, director, and also supported by Ben Fu, the community development director. Um, John, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wu. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, and the Cupertino community at large, John Martier, Senior Planner, Community Development Department. I'm here to present the item uh, that we nicknamed VP1, uh, but it's located as, um, as stated in red by 
the mayor at uh, 19191 Valco Parkway. I'm ready to just... Okay. Yeah, Mike, right here, yeah. Close to my face? Okay. Is that better? Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm usually loud as it is, but... Um, so, if, uh, there we go. Presentation's up. All right. So, really quick, it's a very quick presentation. So, the project location existing use, as you can see the, from the uh, satellite photo, um, so the corner, uh, northwest corner of uh, Tantau Avenue and Valco Parkway. Um, and it's located amongst a mix of uses. Uh, you have office in the neighborhood as well as retail, residential, and a hotel. It is currently a two story building which sits upon a 7.9 acre site uh, at 141,000 square feet. Um, it's also adjacent to Calabasas Creek to the west um, and uh, 280 to the north. Uh, currently, the site is occupied as well as owned by Apple. Land use designations again, the land use designation is commercial, office, and residential. The special planning area that is um, over uh, this project size is within the heart of, speci heart of the state specific plan, uh, specifically the East Stevens Creek Boulevard area, as well as part of the South Valco Master Plan. Uh, the zoning designation is Plan Industrial Park and General Commercial. The proposed de development, as, as stated by the mayor earlier, is uh, is a mix of uses of uh, 280,000 of it being office and 2,300 on the ground floor being uh, commercial. Um, in the rear of the of the building over the of the side is a six little parking garage with two underground and four above ground. Um, there's other associated site improvements as well as the removal and replacement of 11, 113 trees, excuse me, uh, which of which 15 of those are city trees. Um, so really quickly over the site design, which I, I believe Apple could probably explain better um, the architecture and whatnot. Um, and there they have a presentation themselves. But let me just give you kind of a high level view of it. So common open space, there's really two areas of common open space that we'll be focusing on. Um, there's that of the retail right there, it's about approximately about 9,000 square feet adjacent to Valco Parkway, as well as the front entry in directly in front of the, uh, of the retail portion. And then you have the private open, common open space, which is um, mainly just for the employees of the, uh, of the office building. And over here, the third, actually, there actually is a third common open space. Uh, this one's also private as well. It's going to be a, a new creek overlook. Uh, as you can tell, so if, if, if you were look through this, the staff report, the attachments, the, the west driveway currently as it stands is just, just straight north-south driveway. This one, as well as being north-south, is also incorporated a meandering approach to the rear, which allows for this kind of creek overlook um, for those who are visiting the site. Um, again, the retail portion is in parking structure is uh, in the arrows in the arrows. So the retail is a blue arrow as well as the orange circle uh, delineates where exactly on the site the parking structure is. <clears throat> this item was heard and recommended by the Planning Commission on March 28th, 2023. Uh, the plan so they conducted the, 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 the hearing on that date. Uh, the recommendation was 3-0 with Fung and Lin Skong recusing themselves that the City Council find the project exempt from CEQA pursuant to guidelines section 15183 and adopt the resolutions approving the project. Uh, the motion to approve included a modification to development permit resolution regarding bird safe fenestration. So general plan compliance of the, of the project. So first we, we look at allocation. Um, so if you know then within the land use element of the general plan, um, use and development is uh, limited uh, by what's within the allocation pot, as we call it. So this is a simplified version of it. So this, this project would fall into two, two columns of the allocation pot, which one is Heart of City Commercial, and the other one is a major employee office. Um, just really briefly, major employers are separate than regular office in the sense that they would have to have a uh, headquarters here, as well as own the, you know, staff interpretation that they own the property as well. So Apple would fall in the category of a major employer uh, that has a headquarters in the city. So uh, the current allocation for a retail in the um, heart of the city is uh, 793,000. Uh, if we take away 2,300 square feet that's been allocated to the project, we're left with approximately 790,000 square feet. Um, currently citywide for major employer office, there's about 523,000 and 118 square feet of, uh, of, 
a major employer office allocation. The net project square footage that will be allocated to this would be 139,796 square feet, with the remaining balance being 383,322. Uh, the net project square footage takes into consideration uh, what's already there. So that's how you come up with the net. So general plan compliance for height and slope. Uh, the slope line setback from Tantau Avenue is one one to one, um, which is um, consistent with arterials and major corridors in the city. Um, the project falls well well within this um, this setback line, the slope line setback. Um, the general plan also allows for development in this area to go up to 45 feet, up to 60 if they provide ground floor retail. Um, the office building itself is 58 feet six inches and the parking structure is uh, approximately 42 feet, four inches. So um, really quickly through this, this is just this table just shows the conformance to the um, development standards as required by the uh, heart of the city specific plan. Front setbacks, 35 feet, as well as 35 feet on the corner side, which is essentially Tantau. As you can see, the proposed uh, development is well uh, beyond the uh, front setback standards. Uh, both for the office building and the parking structure. The interior side, basically the Cal Calabasas Creek side, is, is also well within, well beyond what's required, um, which is essentially minimum 10 feet and or um, one half the height of the building. In the rear, there is no rear setback if it's, the, if it's not adjacent to uh, uh, residential properties, so you can see it's 162 feet. So again, um, this is a rendering of, of a couple of... Uh, a couple of perspectives of what the proposed building will look like. Um, is in, again, the the uh, the applicant will provide further discussions about the architecture of the building and further renderings um, of the building itself. Uh, the perspective on the upper left corner is looking uh, east down Valco Parkway, uh, with the Main Street development on the on the uh, south side and the uh, proposed building on the north side of it. Um, as you can see, the the heights of the buildings on the south side of Main Street are around 60 feet themselves, um, while the um, while the buildings uh, well, well the office building um, itself is 60 feet as well. So again, here's a perspective of the parking structure looking south um, from 280. Say if you have a bird flying over, literally a bird's eye view. Um, and then on the uh, lower right over here, you have um, just, again, another rendering kind of showing the whole site developed. Uh, parking analysis. So um, the municipal code um, allows, uh, under its regulations for off-street parking, if this is within a planned development zone, which this is, uh, the parking standards are, are more, function more as guidelines rather than prescriptive. So Apple is uh, proposing uh, to extend their traffic demand management program currently in place for several of their office sites, including the Apple Park uh, development, and extending it to this site as well. Uh, this would include the commute coaches, ride sharing, bicycling, walking, um, incentives, parking, uh, I'm sorry, public transit, transit subsidies, as well as bike share. Um, in fact, currently the existing building itself is, is also within that TDM, th those TDM measures as well. Um, so how does this change? So instead of having requiring one for 285 square feet for the office portion, uh, the, the office portion would be one space for every 311 and a half square feet, which is consistent uh, to the what's required at the Apple Park development. Um, they are providing, however, 914 spaces where 995 are required. So essentially, around approximately a 9% reduction from the prescriptive uh, parking standards. So uh, tree removal and replacement. Um, so they are, again, removing 113 trees, which include um, the 15 uh, street trees. Ash trees are along Valco Parkway. And the replacements for those trees specifically would be 126. However, um, 95 trees on site are, are to remain. Uh, with the added 126 replacement trees, the applicant is, is proposing to add 57 further tree plantings, um, uh, which would bring uh, approximately 278 trees on site. And I believe if my calculations are correct. That's about 70 more trees than currently exist on site right now. 
And again, 15 street trees. Okay, uh, an environmental review project is exempt from the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act under CEQA guidelines section 15183, as it is consistent with the development density established by existing zoning, community plan, and or general plan policies for which an EIR was certified. Um, it would not require additional environmental review, except as might be necessary to examine whether there are project specific um, significant effects which are peculiar to projects or at site. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that we have three members of PlaceWorks who uh, completed this environmental review, um, zooming in right now. So any questions specific to the review or any um, secret issues, uh, they'd be more than happy to respond. Uh, conclusion, that staff recommends approval since the project and conditions of approval addressed all concerns related to the proposed development and all the findings for the approval of the proposed project consistent with chapters 19156, 19168, and 1418 of the Cupertino Municipal Code may be made. Next step, council's decision is final subject to any petition for reconsideration that is filed within 10 days of the decision. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, John. And now I would like to invite the... Um the applicants to make your presentation. Welcome. Bring up the, the screen. Good afternoon, Mayor Wei and the rest of the City Council and members of staff. My name is Gary Chow, and I'm part of Apple's real estate and development team. It is a pleasure to be here this evening to present to you our office redevelopment project located on Valco Parkway. Cupertino is our hometown, and we're proud to have more than 40 years of history here. Uh, we're very excited about this project, especially with the opportunity to further expand our footprint in Cupertino. So thank you for the time and consideration today. Our project site is located at the corner of Tantown and Valco Parkway. Currently, there's existing service parking surrounding a two-story two office building, uh, including a fair amount of service parking and driveways and hardscape between the building and Valco Parkway. The project is unique in that it is extremely well screened from views. Since 280 is to the north, Calabasas Creek is to the west, Valco Parkway is to the south, and Tantau Avenue is to the east. This is uh, the proposed site plan. The project is designed to be consistent with the city's codes and general plan. We are proposing a 2,300 square foot corner ground floor commercial space with a large outdoor plaza to help activate and support the future commercial and office activities. With our proposed design, most of the existing hardscape and parking that currently exists out in front of the building will be eliminated and replaced with new landscaping in an active plaza. This is a rendering of the project from Valco Parkway. The project will significantly enhance the design of the office property as well as the frontage landscaping experience. I won't go through uh, the specs of the project again since staff has done that already. But one point to note is that uh, 15 of the trees removed are existing street trees to be removed at the request of the city. And the, this is to accommodate a new public sidewalk and a detached landscape parkway. Currently, the existing street trees are, uh, the species itself is not appropriate for urban setting, often causing safety issues by uplifting sidewalk and as well as the uh, adjacent bike path. So the proposed project will replace these trees with better species uh, street trees. The remaining 98 trees removed are in conflict with the proposed project footprint and infrastructures. The project will plant back 183 trees when only 126 are required by code. In total, the project is increasing the number of site trees by 70 from 208 existing to 278 when the project is done. This is a view from Valco Parkway looking east with the existing project site on the left. This is the same view with the proposed project and with the new office building on the left. 
This is the view of the project site standing on Tantel Avenue looking west towards Valco Parkway. This is the same view with proposed project. Note that the existing perimeter large trees will do a great job screening the proposed office building. And you can see from this image, Tantel Avenue is starting to pick up great as it, as it go towards Highway 280. This is a view of the existing office building if you were to stand on the driveway entrance along Valka Parkway. This is the same view, but with the proposed new office building. The new office building is modern in design, similar to the architectural styles of our other relatively new Apple Park office buildings along Tantau Avenue. The architecture, architecture will be a significant improvement as well as the new landscaping and streetscape along Valka Parkway. On this view, you can see that the proposed commercial tenant space is positioned at the prime ground floor corner of the project with optimal, optimal visibility to Valco Parkway. The space will also be supported by the decorative and functional outdoor plaza to help draw customers and activate the frontage. This is a zoomed in site view of the commercial space in the, ex in the exterior decorative plaza. We've worked with city planning staff over the course of the design review process to enhance and enlarge the plaza space. In addition, we also increased the commercial space by more than 50% from our original design at 1,500 square feet to the maximum extent possible at 2,300 square feet. Even though the commercial space can accommodate a, a range of general commercial uses, given its location and proximity to the city's future pedestrian and bike Tamian Trail, trailhead, to the west, we believe that a bike shop use would be well suited and will be successful at this location. Based on our research and outreach with various bike operators, the proposed 2,300 square foot commercial sp space hits the sweet spot in terms of size to facilitate a fully functional and successful bike shop for the area. In addition, the decorative and functional exterior plaza area, approximately 9,000 9, square feet, is intended to help activate future pedestrian and commercial activities in front of the project. Lastly, the project will reserve 10 parking stalls right in front of the commercial store to help support uh, store, employees and, and, uh, store employees and customer parking. This diagram shows how, just how close the proposed commercial space is to the city's future Tamian trailhead. Having a bike shop this close to the trailhead will help promote future bike and pedestrian activities and will optimize, optimize the success of the bike store. As you may know, Apple has a huge bike population. Approximately over a thousand of our employees bike to work on a daily basis. And our Camps Bike program gen generates over 250,000 bike trips per year. These are employees biking to and from our offices in the area. Apple supported the city by funding the initial engineering and design concept of the trailhead that is shown here. We also dedicated a portion of our land along uh, our frontage to ensure that the trailhead will transition smoothly from the public sidewalk. At Apple, we are deeply ingrained in the communities we live and work. As part of that commitment, we work to make a positive impact to both the people and to the planet. We've, always, we've already achieved carbon neutrality for our entire company's footprint since 2020. We're now striving to make our entire supply chain carbon neutral by 2030. This Falco Parkway office project like all of Apple's facilities, will run entirely on renewable energy from day one. In addition, the new office building will run 100% on electrical power without the use of natural gas. And it will also be equipped with solar panels to further offset any energy use. The proposed project will also meet LEED gold standards, which will include high-performing water conservation and waste reduction attributes. In 2019, Apple committed to $2.5 billion to combat housing crisis in California with a range of initiatives over several years. To date, Apple has deployed more than $1.3 billion to a diverse range of projects with more to come on the horizon. 
Most recently, Apple was partnering with the county of Santa Clara to explore a deal transfer of a five-acre parcel in the city of Cupertino that may help create opportunities for affordable housing development in the city located near Wolf and Perimeter Road. Also, as you may recall, Apple has provided a $9.7 million in transportation grant to the city of Cupertino to support various bike and pedestrian safety uh, improvement projects in the city, including the Tamian Trail. And this uh, transportation grant is still active in supporting these projects. Lastly, Apple and our employees also consistently find ways to give back through volunteering our time through our employee giving programs of which Apple matches every dollar for dollar, and other support for nonprofit organizations in the city of Cupertino. In addition to, to uh, expanding Apple's presence in Cupertino and making significant improvements to our property, the project will benefit the city financially in many ways, in form of one-time fees and, re and recurring sustaining revenues. With this project, we're expecting to contribute over $8 million in linkage fees and associated construction tax. This includes approximately $4.5 million going towards Cupertino's housing mitigation program. We're also expecting with the project, the property value will increase significantly, which will help generate over $200,000 per year in tax revenue to the city. And that's an increase of approximately $160,000 compared to the current condition. Other benefits include, but not limited to, services and the sales tax potential from the bike shop in the future. Also the opportunity for the city and Apple to collaborate to help retain and attract highly skilled workforce with this project. Not to mention the benefits from Apple employees to the surrounding commercial establishments. I'm sorry, that is your time limit? I'm almost wrapping up. Okay. The, in, in the city services, lastly, we're excited that, that with this project, uh, we will help promote more bike and pedestrian activities in the region. That concludes my presentation. And again, thank you for your time. We're available to answer any questions. Thank you, Gary. Um, so now we're going to open up for council questions. Ma Mayor, yes. uh, uh, would this be a good time to ask council members if they have any ex parte communications to disclose? So I would like to declare that I actually toured um, the campus uh, with the site with John and Luke and also Gary and Eric. Yeah, yeah so um, that's, um, I did it yesterday, I think. Any um, council members? Yeah, I also toured the site last Friday with uh, you guys and the Rod. Thank you for the tour. I also went on a site tour with the same individuals on, I believe it was Monday. Um, and previously had a project briefing from Mr. Deridon and Mr. Chow. Thank you very much. I also had the opportunity to uh, tour the property with planning staff as well as um, Apple staff. And so I just wanted to declare that. Thank you, council members. And um, so, uh, oh, yeah. okay. okay, thank you. So I also toured today uh, with uh, John and Ben, uh, Rod Deridon, Gary Chow, Eric Serrano, and Luke um, from our staff, and then I had a meeting, and I can't recall how long ago it was, maybe a year or wow. two ago, That's right. um, with uh, Gary and Rod Deridon to, it was on Zoom, um, to get a look at the project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, council members, and I forgot to mention Rod was there when I was touring the site, too. So um, we all are very familiar with the project, so we each have five minutes to ask questions of our staff and also Gary. Um, anyone who wants to ask questions first? Go ahead, Council Member Moore. This is more of a question probably for PlaceWorks. Um, so I was reading in the soils report, there was some um, benzene. I was wondering if you know what the source of that is. And then um, the, the next question I have is regarding the signage for whatever kind of a shop that would uh, come in there. Um, and I'll start with those two. I've got a couple of questions about uh, some PDF items and, um, and one last question after that. So if we could begin with uh, sources of the benzene. Thank you. Um, if you review the uh, uh, phase one from 2007, um, they did mention there was a large um, uh, concentrations of benzene uh, on the site, uh, but the, there's also a follow-up 
report that was done uh, in 2021, and it showed that the values had gone way down. And uh, it was also disclosed that there was a natural gas leak um, under the that affected the the concentrations. And uh, as a result, um, the, two, the 2021 uh, samples that they collected uh, went down uh, like over 70 percent from the original uh, 20, 2007 values that they had so um, I think it can be uh, reasonably assumed to um, attribute the high high levels of benzene to that natural gas leak okay thank you and so the next question was with regards to the signage um, I, I know that the, your, your buildings, the Apple's buildings, have a certain aesthetic uh, quality to it, and I'm wondering what you're anticipating to allow for signage um, there because you're going to have a, a, a retail store. Mike? Is that on? Okay. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, there is a condition, I believe, in the resolution that requires uh, the signage plan to be reviewed by staff prior to issuance of building permit. We do look forward to working with the tenant, whoever that may be, once we have the entitlement to work through some of the signage requirements. Uh, it will in it entail our own signs, which usually is a ground sign, and most likely there's going to be a, a, a belay sign of some sort um, that's going to be on the building that advertises uh, the, the commercial um, retail store. So. But I can't speak to that right now just because we don't have a tenant in mind. We like to work with that particular tenant and then work out a plan that would uh, be proposed to the city, which all signs require permits. So definitely um, appreciate the comment and we'll make sure to, to give uh, the, 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 the right appropriate amount of visibility to uh, an advertisement to the commercial store. Okay, um, so I'm looking at it more in terms of having it um, be appropriate for your building architecturally Understood. And, and have it yep. have it be uh, have appealing. Um, so when we look in the um, the agenda packet, uh, it's PDF 146. Um, I'm wondering if uh, my question is, um, are there CEQA mitigation measures or is that something that actually needed to be, be struck um, from the document? So on uh, PDF 146. Uh, so pre-construction meeting and construction management plan, item 13. Uh, the plan shall include but not be limited to the following A, compliance with CEQA mitigation measures. Uh, correct, that should be struck. Okay, thank you. Thank and you for catching that. Um, page um, 144. Uh, question is whether or not there's a typo. Um, uh, let's see. There was. Um, is this part of a resolution, uh, Council Member Moore? Yeah, there's a statement that makes it sound as though there are um, uh, significant impacts. Oh, okay. And uh, I. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's. Um, 142, I'm sorry. Uh, 142, item 2. Um, <clears throat> The uh, PlaceWorks in their VPI Apple Office Project CEQA Guidelines Section 15183 checklist, which concluded that the project would create any significant impacts beyond what was analyzed in the city's general plan EIR. I believe it should say cre not create. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's correct. And if someone from PlaceWorks can confirm that that was an error and it should say not correct, uh, not create. Yes, that's correct. It would not create any new impact. Okay. And then um, lastly is more of a comment. I'm hoping that, uh, especially in light of the presentation um, that you just made, that uh, that Apple will be working with Caltrans and the city and county to work to um, humanely relocate the homeless individual living adjacent to your property. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other Oh, questions from other council members? Council Member Foon? Yeah, two rather quick ones. First, um, if you could just for the sake of um, everyone's understanding of what will happen with the city owned trees, uh, Mr. Chow, if you could elaborate on why it is that, that there's the feeling that they need to be removed and then what new uh, species would be replacing them. 
Sure. Uh, thank you. The 15 of the trees in reference are street trees. They're currently uh, shamel ash, and uh, they're notoriously known for not appropriate for urban settings. They're very evasive. They need a lot of room. And as a result, over the years, and your public work staff can attest to this, uh, that uh, those 15 trees have been causing a lot of issues, uprooting, uplifting sidewalks, and literally up shifting curbs. Uh, and, and uplifting uh, the pavement on the, the bike path, which is very dangerous. Um, those, and then you all, you, get, you all have visited the site. You can you can see grains in new pavements that are repeatedly had to be in, replaced just to reduce those safety issues. So uh, it's a condition from the public works department for us to remove those trees, replace it with new ash trees. But this time around, uh, better species ash trees. I believe they're called ur urbanite urbanite ash trees. And they are much more um, friendly to uh, sidewalks. And also, the other reason for doing this is that right now, we have a substandard sidewalk out there. With this opportunity, we will uh, shift the sidewalk more inboard, widening it. Also, um, properly place a contiguous parkway that's, that's going to be kind of like a green belt along the street. So further enhance the aesthetics of, of the frontage. Thank you. And then um, if you could throw up your final slide one more time that had the taxes and fees that are paid. Can we have staff bring up the presentation? Nope. The other fee. There you go. Yeah, first, I want to I want to thank you for having added this. I thought it was a useful thing when um, this item was before the planning commission, um, especially for the sake of understanding what the total impact is um, for the city budget. And, and in particular, I just wanted to underscore with respect to ongoing property tax revenue. Um, does this figure anticipate um, fixtures as well as the building? Okay, yes. so it's all inclusive. All right, right. thank you. Thank you, Council Member Flum. Vice Mayor Mohan. Uh, I had a question about the parking. I know you said that there were few, going to be fewer parking than uh, ideal. Uh, and then you also talked about the 11 parking spaces in front of the, the retail, the, the bike shop. Right. Uh, is there some flexibility uh, that is for customers and em employees as well, right? The, 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 the 11 sp uh, spaces. So will there be some flexibility in the event that 15 people show up? Uh, appreciate the, the question. The, the 10 parking stalls that are reserved for retail does consider the rate is per code, and that does build in uh, you know, the retail customers as well as employees. That being said, you know, it, it, just like with any of our properties, we don't, there's no gate on, on this property, and it's right contiguous to other parking stalls. I don't see that as an issue if there's a little bit of overflow. Also, um, it, it, meaning that, you know they can park adjacent to that area. Um, it should be noted that uh, there's planning of parking in the area as well, right across from Main Street. There's a big, big parking garage, mm -hmm. and, and typically the second and the third or fourth floor is all, always pretty empty. So parking really isn't a problem from a commercial support standpoint in the region. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, you talked about the, the uh, bike shop being uh, about 2,300 square feet. How, how does that uh, compare with other bike shops in the area? Is that too big? Is it too small? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, we think it's just the right uh, uh, amount of uh, square feet. We s did a lot of research and outreach to reputable bike operators in the region. And uh, what we're hearing is that uh, bike stores want now, given the market and the current uh, demand for, for bikes and in, in its operation, uh, 2,000 is the sweet spot. So that's why we're very comfortable with the 2,300 square foot square foot that we're proposing. Okay. And you're pretty confident that it is going to be a bike shop? 
that's the, the use that we think it's gonna be uh, the most appropriate for that location, given the proximity to the trail, although we're open to, uh, the, the zoning does allow other commercial uses for that space, uh, which we're open to, but we really will want to locate a bike shop there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, that's all I. Councilmember Chow. <laughs> Councilmember Chow, please. Thank you. So thank you for the project. I understand uh, Apple is purchasing office buildings in other cities, so really appreciate that Apple is still interested in developing Cupertino. And so, but then you mentioned the tenant. Are you, is Apple not expecting to use this building? You are expecting to rent out to other office tenants? This is for our employees to use this office building, if that's your question. Um, so the commercial at least store for right now, you are not on uh, the Apple employees will be using this office part that's of right. the building. That's right. But in the future, it could still be rented out. Uh, that's not our plan. Our plan mm. is to build this. We own this property. This is for our, our uh, office, our employees use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the current zoning is 45 feet, and then we do allow it to go up to 60 feet. So for one additional f story, that's 700 square feet, uh, provided uh, that you provide ground floor retail. And this is 2,300 is smaller than 7,000, but I think it's a good enough size. And But I think the community is usually concerned when we have retail space, but it may, in case it's not open to the public or the hours is not convenient to the public, it might be considered an Apple employee only cafe like what happened the admin street earlier. So could you clarify for the community what's the intent on how you will operate yep. this space? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, definitely is, this is intended for a publicly accessible commercial space. Uh, Apple is not intending to be the operator, so we're going to be, so, you know, hopefully with your blessing and approval this evening, that we have an entitlement to go out to the marketplace to 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 look for a tenant, a legitimate bike operator. Um, we're going to do everything we can to ensure that it's successful. Uh, so, and then on top of that, as mentioned previously, uh, this project entails a nine nine thousand plus square foot publicly accessible plaza area really to, to help that, that uh, externalize the in, internal use of, of the bike store. Uh, those of you that visited bike store before, you know that there's a lot of activity that goes, outside, that goes on outside of the store as well, and that plaza is perfectly suited to facilitate that. Mm. Hopefully that, that okay. answers your question. Um, so I think, um, in yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And um, then, do you have uh, so the operating hours will be depending on the tenant, right? Depending on the tenant, I yeah. would say it would be reflective of what the market so typically offers. Some community member has requested to have the this written into the covenant of the property that this retail store has to be operated separately and open to the public. Would you be open to that so that their community has a peace of mind that this, even when the property change hand, this requirement will be in place? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I would say that's implied with this entitlement, given the, uh, the parameters that we're proposing and the ordinances that are in effect. Uh, I'll let staff to speak to on the covenant piece, whether if that's appropriate or not, but uh, we understand that this, this setup runs with the land. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Confirming with uh, Mr. Chow that the the conditions of approval basically run with the land, and any deviation of that would, would require a modification to the permit. So it will not be a covenant, but it's understood that this condition will. Yes. Be complied with. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. And I think we received an email that um, mentioned uh, this site was a Superfund site and they are concerned about environmental cleanup that might be necessary given that you are digging two stories underground for the garage. So I wonder, do we 
Have we looked into potential environmental issues with underground uh, potential um, hazard? So the, um, I, can, I can start to answer this one. We also have place works that um, t tonight a desk item was provided to council that was that provided a response to the, the member of the community who had submitted that email. Um, so I'll start off by saying that, uh, just to clarify, this site specifically was never a super fun site. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a site um, on the other side of uh, Calabasas Creek that had some contamination that was remediated, I believe, in 2011 um, or 2011. So, um, yeah, I mean, so any of those concerns and questions, um, I'll let PlaceWorks respond. Yes, so the, um, as I mentioned before, uh, there was a phase one um, with that included some site testing on the site. Um, the phase one, um, it, it basically looks at the site history and looks for the most likely areas that there could possibly be any release of chemicals. And um, they took that assessment and based on that, they uh, collected groundwater samples, they, they uh, did sub slab testing and uh, basically uh, between uh, the reports in 2007 and, and uh, 2021, uh, it shows that the site doesn't have any outstanding issues that require any kind of remediation, and it's appropriate for the commercial use. Thank you. All right, thank you. So I do have a couple questions for you, Gary. So can you go back to the sustainability slide um, with solar? And um, I have a question to see if um, that can be done. So this building, it is not a net zero building, is it? Is it possible you can build it into a net zero building um, that the power generated from the solar and everything could sustain the operation of the building, like what uh, Sunville City Hall has yeah. been certified with? Yeah. Great question. Just to clarify, if I wasn't clear, from day one, um, this building will be operating net zero energy. Um, in addition, we have solar panels on top. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, because I did see it's a lead gold design, so maybe that equals that. Or so it probably exceeding, is that what you're saying, is exceeding yes. that. Okay, thank you. So um, it doesn't say it, but I'm pretty sure there are going to be bike, sh bike racks um, in the parking yes. lot for bikers, right? We'll have bike racks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any more questions. If we don't have questions from the um, you, a little time, um, Gary, just. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many employees do you expect to uh, anticipate to um, accommodate in this building? From an occupancy standpoint, a north of a thousand. Mm -hmm. so how many currently are there? About five hundred. Five hundred, so yeah. like double mm -hmm. that. Okay, thank That's you. Right. Thank you. If there are no questions from the council, I'd like to open up for public comments. Do we have any cards? And yes, Mayor, answers? I have I have eight requests to speak cards for in community hall, and I see one hand raised on Zoom. All right. Thank you. Our first three speakers are Jennifer Griffin, Peggy Griffin, and Jennifer Van Every. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon again, uh, City Council. Hi, I'm Jennifer Griffin. And uh, John, I met with John Martyr uh, several times about this in very nice uh, chairs and uh, big video screen. Um, because we have that weird problems from SB 1214 where people can't see plans, but Apple has been exceedingly accommodating. And um, I worked at Tandem in the 80s in the two buildings immediately adjacent uh, on the other side of Calabasas Creek next to uh, the old uh, Pinnies uh, building. And um, I'm very, very familiar with these. This building was executive office for Jimmy Trabig. It has always been nice quarters, um, very, very lovely building over the years. Um, I am very appreciative that Apple has always been a good neighbor in terms of trying to put their best foot forward in terms of the lay of the land, the trees, the vegetation in this area. Um, 
I've always been really, really happy that we had as much green belt there because the east side had no parks. This was our green belt. We have the lovely stand of trees along um, home, Homestead Road that Apple has. So I consider Apple an outstanding neighbor. They're very, very sensitive to the public's issues. And um, I'm very glad, I know, I'm sorry that the ashes that are in the uh, public right of way are going to go down, but they, we've discussed the types of ashes that are going in and I think that they have a really good plan for that. I believe that the ashes may be retained that are on Tantau that are going up the hill because they are not planted in planters, they're in the ground. And um, a lot of these trees go back to the 70s when Tandem owned the property. Um, I, uh, they were very, very accommodating talking about the uh, bike shop. I was concerned about the circulation of the big buses that go in there. This property was remodeled about nine years ago, and they brought, they had a um, traffic, I'd call it a plaza for drop off for the big buses, Apple buses. And I was concerned about how the traffic circulation would happen if we had bikes coming in and out of the front of the property. And it sounds like they have a really good plan. I've seen the pictures for the parking garage. It is a big parcel. Um, I'm very familiar with the Calabasas Creek Trail along there. Um, there used to be a bridge probably 15 years ago that went a walkway that went between the two buildings over Calabasas, but that has gone down. Um, so I am, I will say I'm very happy with the project. I think out, Apple, the building, is an outstanding example of tech buildings. My husband said he's very, very happy with it. It's similar to the R&D building that is on the other side of 280 on Valco Parkway. And I think that it's going to add to the area and Thank it should you, be Jennifer. very lovely. Thank you. Next we have Peggy Griffin followed by Jennifer Van Every followed by Sean Panchal. Welcome, Peggy. Good evening, Mayor Way, Vice Mayor Mohan, council members and staff. I had a slide, I'm gonna show it anyway, but uh, things have changed a little bit. Um, I was the one that asked for a covenant and it was because of all the mistakes and errors that happened on Main Street. Um, so what I'm asking now, if, if, if you don't need a covenant, but you're putting it in the conditions of approval, I'm asking that all the conditions for the commercial space be in one place so it can be pointed to if the building should be sold. It should say that it's open to the public. Um, it should say that there are 10 dedicated parking spaces. It should say that it ought to be open weekdays and weekends. Um, and that payment isn't restricted. Um, in Main Street, only Apple Pay and employee accounts were used, so you couldn't buy a cup of coffee. Um, and that the bird safe and dark sky ordinances are ap apply. Um, also, all this should not, the building should be inspected to make sure that this is true before they're allowed to move in and work. They were doing that in Main Street before they even verified that the the square footage was there, and it wasn't. So I'd like you to you know, make sure we don't make the same mistakes twice, put it all together, easy to find, so if the building sold. And my issue also is, I believe in written communications, Rhoda Fly, Fry sent a summary of different bike shops and their square footage. And the average was about 4,000 square feet, so I'm concerned about 2300 being successful size for a bike shop. Also, it was only council member Chow that brought up that the general plan says in exchange for retail, you get an extra floor. But the intent was the whole bottom floor retail, not just the little corner. So I'd like you to keep that in mind because this is not what the intent was. Thank you. The building's nice. Apple always does a good job, and the city will benefit. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Next we have Jennifer Van Every, 
Sean, followed by Sean Penshaw, followed by Louise Sadati. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Good afternoon, Council. Um, I represent Shashi Hospitality Group. We own and operate the Aloft Cupertino. I'm sure it is no surprise that Apple is our, our key client. So we are thrilled to see this redevelopment, delighted that they are investing back into Cupertino. Um, so we just we wanted to really share our support there. They are why we are in Cupertino and why we built the hotel in Cupertino. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Next we have Sham Panchal, followed by Louise Sadati, followed by Jennifer Sheeran. Welcome, Sean. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, my name is Sean Panchal, and I represent First Magnuson Holdings. Uh, Cupertino, we operate an office building. And um, I just wanted to say I, I believe that this uh, redevelopment is a very positive uh, redevelopment. It, it adds to the bravado of uh, developments that are here in Cupertino. And I'd say uh, that, you know, it, it's in line with uh, the general plan. It meets the city ordinances. Um, it also modernizes some of the uh, bike paths and pedestrian access to that land use, which I think is a really wonderful thing. Um, third, I'd say, uh, you know, it, it's increasing the growth of, I believe, a third more trees on that land. That's a wonderful thing, too, and a wonderful uh, Cupertino community member. So overall, I'd say I recommend that you support it and approve this plan. Um, it'll be a wonderful piece for uh, the city of Cupertino. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Next, we have Luis Dotti, followed by Jennifer Sharon, followed by Claudio Bono. So um, my name is uh, Luis Dotti. And uh, true confessions, this is my very first time speaking in person. So, uh, 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 so, so, I, w I want to, in person, thank the mayor, Hung Wei, the vice mayor, Sheila Mohan, council member, Liang Chow, uh, Kitty, uh, actually, J.R. Fruin, and Kitty Moore for um, your hard work as councilman. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to Pam Wu, our wonderful new city manager, our uh, hardworking, uh, dogged uh, city attorney, uh, <laughs> Mr. Jennings, I mean, sorry, Chris Jenner, and is that I said? Well, anyway, my first time. And also to um, Kirsten. Okay, I'm gonna, so Cora, city clerk, and all the city staff who worked so hard together to make Cupertino a great city for all the residents to live in. Uh, also kudos to the many involved residents who show up in person, Zoom, emails, and by voting. Uh, it's with this process of involved residents hardworking city staff and council um, that we can have such a wonderful city to live in. Um, regarding item four, uh, Apple has been a good partner with Cupertino for decades and willing to work with the city and with benefits to the residents that, um, that the Apple representatives have uh, enumerated today. Oh, I also meant to thank the Apple representatives for being present and for all their wonderful audio visuals and explaining uh, the great things that Apple has done. Uh, this project that they're uh, pr talking about will create jobs and generate revenue for the city. It has synergy with Main Street and there is easy access between Main Street and Apple Parkway. So everyone, can benefit. Uh, it's a win-win situation. Uh, also, um, the residents are grateful and proud to live in Cupertino, which we know is the headquarters for Apple uh, for over 40 years. We're also often presently su pleasantly surprised to have people around the world recognize Cupertino because their iPhones were all initially set to Cupertino time. So there you have it. Um, thank you for uh, making Cupertino your headquarters. We enjoy having you here. And we're very um, pro Apple. All my products at home are Apple. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Next we have Jennifer Sharon, followed by Claudio Bono, followed by Jean Bedord. Welcome, Jennifer. 
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Way and council members. Um, I'm speaking today only on behalf of myself as a resident. I urge you today to approve this building proposal. First, um, I'd like to commend Apple for their commitment to an investment in biking infrastructure in our city. As all the council members know, uh, I've been a firm advocate for walking, biking, and um, recreational space in our city for many years now, and uh, including being on the Walk Bike Cupertino board. And Apple has really stepped up um, with an excellent TDM program, including bike shares. They've generously donated to build um, improvements to our intersections, bike lanes, and even, even things around our schools. So I'm, I'm really pleased about that. As someone who frequents bike shops, um, as I have a couple bikes myself and everyone in my family does too, I know that we've lost many shops locally uh, just in the last few years. Some commenters, I, I saw it I think in, oral, in a written communication, stated that the bike shop needs to be at least double the square footage that's, that's listed here for this retail space. Um, I have data that shows that's actually not the case. Most bicycle shops are actually reducing their footprint. Uh, one close by example is Chain Reaction, which is now closed, um, which was on Stevens Creek, just west of Wolf um, in the shopping center with uh, Joanne Fabrics, if everybody knows where that is. Uh, when their lease was up, they wanted to downsize and um, the landlord refused to cut their space by half. They said no. And so in the end, they closed. So I think this is actually a reasonable size for a bike shop based on review of all these other shops that are local. The new, the new building would benefit our community and increase the green space um, along the street frontage, which would make Valco Parkway more inviting and friendly. And to me, I'm always for more green space. It reduces the parking lot, which would also reduce the heat island effect. So I'm in favor of that as well. So thank you for considering my input and your work on behalf of Cupertino. Good day. Thank you, Jennifer. Next, we have Claudio Bono, followed by Jean Bedord, followed by Rhoda Fry. Welcome, Claudio. Good evening, Mayor Wei, Vice Mayor Mohan, City Council members, as well as city staff. I'm not here to represent any organizations, but myself as a 10-year uh, Cupertino resident. And I'm actually here to simply ask uh, City Council to uh, recommend that the City Council approve the resolutions. I think the um, presentation speaks for itself and uh, uh, Apple did a wonderful job so there you go I'll keep it short thank you thank you Claudia next we have Jean Bedord followed by Rhoda Fry followed by our final speaker in Community Hall Kathy Helgerson welcome Jean welcome well I originally said good after good evening but I really think it's still afternoon <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, good afternoon, Mayor Way and council members. My name is Jean Bedord and I am a resident of Cupertino. I am here to urge you to approve this project to replace an obsolete building with a new state-of-the-art office building. The old building shows its age and it's clearly a 1980s design built before Apple Park and Main Street. It's totally car-centric with little consideration for pedestrians, bicycles, and alternate transportation. And the technology, particularly Apple's technology, has certainly changed. There are significant benefits to the city in approving this, as been shown. Uh, Apple will have to pay development fees, which will help in our budget shortfall that we anticipate. This will also trigger reassessment, so Apple will be paying higher property taxes, which will help not only our city, but also our schools. Adding more employees in this location will also help the struggling restaurants and services along Valco Parkway and Main Street. And Apple's commitment to bicycle services and activities is consistent with the city's focus on improving pedestrian and bike activities. I'm pleased that Apple has done its research in proposing an actual business for the retail space. Cupertino does not need more retail space that can't be leased. It needs to attract businesses that will meet the needs of our community with space that will ensure their success. This project meets that criteria. So I urge you to unanimously approve this new building. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Next we have Rhoda Fry followed by Kathy Helgerson. Welcome, Rhoda. 
Hi, good afternoon. Uh, 40 year resident of Cupertino and a good couple of decades at Tanum, where this property is and, and where other Apple properties are. So I'm going to make a quote of uh, Jimmy Trabig, our former CEO, who would say, It's exciting. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I, great project. I do have a few um, questions, concerns. Um, what will be done to mitigate the housing demand for the 500 additional employees? Um, <clears throat> we've already talked about the area, the ground floor area being uh, designated for ground floor, the retail area, sorry, I'm losing my words here, and, and I'm kind of a little confused about how the density bonus works because it seems like it's a small area and getting a large density in return for that. It's more of a general con uh, concern. Um, and then with respect to the parking um, areas, we know that the, the current spaceship model is being used. How has that panned out? So I'd like to know that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I was thinking about I see it's interesting to talk about the bicycle shops, whether they're viable, not viable. I did some some checks there in the planning. I wrote to the planning commission about it. It's in your packets. It seems like a lot of bike shops are actually about twice the size. Um, but the other thing is, if there had been more ground floor retail, because that my understanding is that area is, is designated for that, um, you know, we would have ostensibly more. Say, uh, income tax. So one of the things I'm wondering about as far as mitigating that, because we have that in a number of areas in our city where we've got more, uh, more offices coming in where we would have had retail. So is the city considering at all uh, doing any kind of a headcount tax? Um, lastly, uh, Apple builds beautiful buildings. Boy, are we lucky to have them in the community. Um, I also hope that they'll consider Connie Cunningham's suggestion to do the best for our bird community. Maybe she'll be on the phone tonight. Um, you know, it's, it's adjacent to a, a creek. There's, they're planting lots of trees, which is wonderful. So lots of birds. So I'm hoping that they can do the best for our bird population uh, in addition to us humans. And, and the other thing that I, we can see, it's a, be, it just a massive amount of fenestration. And with all those windows again, um, let's see if uh, y'all can do not just what's required for birds, but what's best, best for our bird population. Thank you. Thank you, Rhoda. And our final speaker in Community Hall is Kathy Helgerson. Welcome, Kathy. Well, I'm so glad Apple's here because I've got the, something to ask them in the city. Um, I would like to know, is um, this facility going to carry an R&D uh, portion? Um, and the reason I'm asking is because I live right next door to one on Banley Drive that's been there for, well, I've lived here for 41 years. And I took them to court once, and I took the city to court and Cal Water about the pollution there, okay, and the four thermotron ovens that they were emitting pollution all over. Finally, they installed this huge HVAC system on top of the building. Um, this building is extremely secretive. Okay, and they don't have any signs up there saying what it is or anything. Um, I've got Paul Sullivan with the city checking on this because I want to know what kind of permit they have. Um, they have put so many things into this building. I believe it's been um, changed or upgraded into light or heavy industrial. It doesn't belong there. It's not zoned for that. It's uh, either it's zoned for commercial, that whole street. Um, I want it moved. I don't care where they move it, but they got to get it out of there, okay? And I think it's hurting the neighborhood, and it's hurting me and my family, and I can't even prove that with cancer, my husband and I, my animals, I don't know who's doing it. Is it Lehigh? Is it uh, Seeding the Clouds? Is it Apple? Is it pollution in general? I don't know. But this facility, if they're going to move it, even if they move something like in Velco, I want this R&D facility out of here. now. I don't want it moved into a, a next to another neighborhood and contaminating or polluting somebody else, okay? This is wrong. So they have to figure out what to do about this. But if the permit, okay, states that it is commercial 
and not industrial, I don't want it changed. Don't go and change it to industrial just to accommodate them because they're putting so much money into the city. You have to understand, R&D, and I've worked in the industry for 35 years, okay, for all these companies here in the Valley. I know what R&D is, and there is pollution. I need something done about this. So if you could uh, get Paul, um, Sullivan, I've sent an email to him, I've sent it to you guys, lots of information, and I would like, you can go, maybe they'll let you go look at the building. Why don't you ask them if you can go in there? Because the fire department, uh, Paul is working on this with the fire department and the permit department. Okay, and I haven't heard back from him, so I will be bothering him next week, trying to find out what's going on here. This has to be resolved. I'm worried about if they're gonna put in any more R&D facilities anywhere. They could put more than one in. We have to be careful where they put this, okay, because it is a big problem. If you would come out to the building and see this huge, monstrous HVAC system on top of the building and it's facing Banley going out, I'm right behind, I'm not even 100 feet away from this building, and there's other houses around there. You know, we need to look into this. You guys need to find out what's going on in there and what it could be doing to the, to the neighborhood, okay? And what it's done to my family, and there's nothing I could do. I couldn't get a lawyer to help me or anything. Nobody would take on Apple because they're so strong. Now, if you guys are from Apple, go back and do your homework and find out what's going on with that R&D on Banley. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and we will move to Zoom. We have one speaker who had their hand raised within the nine minute time limit. It's Connie Cunningham. Welcome, Connie. Um, good evening, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening, um, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor and Council members, as well as staff and uh, all the project um, applicants in the hall. My name is Connie Cunningham. I'm a housing commissioner speaking for myself only. I am also an Audubon member of the local chapter and I have uh, seen the planning commission and talked at the planning commission and also Annie Yang who is chair of the environmental action committee uh, from the Audubon society locally uh, and a member of a resident of Cupertino as I am. Um, we also met with um, John Martyr. Thank you so much for your time, John. Appreciate it very much yesterday. Um, the points that we would like to make um, do not in our, uh, make any problem with all the uh, accolades that have been said to date about the good things that are being brought. However, there is something that is often not looked at, and that is the bird safe and dark skies um, impact of a um, new project. In this case, the uh, Apple project is using the um, alternative plan uh, for uh, bird safe and dark skies. Um, so we brought up these questions before and would really like them to be addressed during this next, um, as I understand it, four to six months that the um, alternative plan is being created. One is that window corners cannot be clear birds cannot see that that is window. They only see clear skies and they run into it and they meet their deaths in that way. They cannot use fritting or other bird safe kinds of glass on corners because that is not effective and the birds don't see it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we would also really um, urge you to look at the American Bird Conservatory threat factor of 20 and use 20 or less, birds do not see the way we do. Um, it's important to note that the UV um, application on windows cannot be seen by many of the birds that happen to live in our specific area. We're on the Pacific Flyway, excuse me. And thirdly, Kelvin 2700 for lighting. Um, we have, and we know, Kelvin 3000 in our ordinance However, since that ordinance has been passed, time goes by and there are uh, more and more different kinds of lighting structures and so forth to be used. And we would encourage Apple to please use the Kelvin 2700. It's better lighting, not just for the birds, but also for humans. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, birds migrate at night and it's very important that the lighting not distract them from where they are going. Um, I had heard at the planning commission, oh dear, time's up. 
I, I urge uh, the Apple to consider these things as they prepare their plan. Thank you for my time. Thank you, Connie. Mayor, that is the last speaker. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Um, the applicant has a couple minutes to answer questions. If you want to answer some of the applicant's questions, do you have, uh, I think, a couple? There are a couple questions if you want to. Which one do you want me to start with? <laughs> um, we'll start with the birthday first. Um, the city has put together a really good ordinance and very thoughtful, and our project will comply with the birth safe ordinance. Um, the American Birth Conservancy uh, Group rates birth, birth safe windows with threat factors of 30 or less, and we'll make sure to have windows that comply with that requirement. Um, any any other, in particular questions that you you have in mind for me to answer? Because there's a lot that that went on through multiple um, speakers. No. Go ahead. For point of order, this this is this is your time to respond yeah. to anything that was said um, during public comment that you feel is important okay. to respond to. Yeah. No, we feel really good about our project, as uh, um, mentioned previously, and uh, our uh, once again our project com complies with all of your codes and general plan. So thank you for your support. All right, thank you, Gary. Uh, if there are no, um, no more questions, I'd like to thank all the public comments. I think uh, everybody's very interested in this project and I uh, thank you for all the research and all the tools and special thank for our staff and Apple to uh, accommodating our tools. So thank you very much. So I'm gonna close the public comment. And I'm gonna bring it back to um, the council. Um, I think it'll be, I, s I recommend that we make a motion and second first, and then we can start a discussion. Uh, may I entertain a motion? Actually, I'll make a motion for the recommended um, action that uh, bad staff. I'm happy to second. Okay, we have a motion and second, and we're open to uh, deliberation. Each council has five minutes. Council Member Fruin. For the sake of clarity, there were, I think, two um, changes that Council Member Moore wanted to make based upon um, errors that she detected, and so I would like our rec uh, your motion to reflect those changes. Okay, accept that. Yes, accept, uh, I'll accept uh, that too. So um, our motion action. is to recommend the action plus Council Member Moore's two um, edits. Okay. Any further discussions, Council Member Moore? Um, just to clarify, uh, PDF 142, number two, um, add the word not, and then 146, number 13A, to strike that sentence. Thank you. Okay, if there are no further discussions, Council Member Moore? I do, I do have a question uh, with regards to the, the retail size um, matter. Uh, was that something that, that staff looked into as well and that um, you feel comfortable with, the 2,300 versus a 4,000 square feet? Uh, we, we do. When, you know, when this project first came in, the, 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 the proposed size is about 1,300 square feet, so we really worked with uh, the applicant to, to increase that to uh, 2,300. And as a matter of comparison, if I, could, if I may, this room itself from wall to wall is about 2,000 square feet. So the retail size approximately, without, you know, without the dais and the, the lobby, of course, but wall to wall, this is pretty much which, which will be in the, in, the, uh, in the office, proposed office building. Okay, thank you. Um, and through the mayor, we are losing some um, very mature trees. So I appreciate that the 13 trees would be replaced with the, the 26, um, uh, the two foot box. Uh, and, but I'm kind of wondering, um, do you prefer the, the, the number, the 26, over a request for a three-foot box and having the 13? Um, I'm just wondering if visually if we're going to end up looking at very young trees that are replacing very mature ones, and would it be um, less of a visual shock to, to have have a larger tree put in that place, especially seeing as you move to the main campus, um, the full-size mature trees, which have had a few years to settle in. Um, would anyone uh, care to comment on that? Uh, 
Uh, thank you for that question. We've spent a consider considerable amount of time reviewing um, our planting plan with our landscape architect. And as mentioned previously, we're adding plus 70 trees to the site compared to current. We're very comfortable with what we're proposing in terms of size and numbers. Thank you. Okay, thank Appreciate you. It. Okay, if there are no more comments or discussions from the council, let's vote by light. Comment, uh, if I could. Oh, yeah. Hold on to that. I think Council Member Chow says yeah. she has some comments. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank Apple, especially this time the campus will be open to the community. I understand for Apple Park, people were disappointed that it's enclosed because they were able to go on the HP site. And now the community will be able to enjoy the open space up front. Um, really appreciate that. And, and I also appreciate the $9 million grant from Apple that was made in 2019 for three years. That has, has period has ended. This is not on the agenda, but I hope they, there could be a discussion for another grant for the bike trail that you hope to fund the design with. And uh, then also that appreciate that we will receive a slight increase in property tax and uh, the housing mitigation fee. However, I must make this point that even though it's great um, for all these fees, we, the number of employees will increase from 500 to 1,000, which is great. But that doesn't mean the city need, has a demand of 500 more housing units to provide to house these employees. And uh, the housing mitigation fee of $4.5 million in the current uh, economy funds maybe five housing units uh, for low-income people. And that's the scale of the mitigation fee we get versus the actual demand that will be generated by an office project like this. Um, we need this kind of project, definitely, but then the impact that will be created uh, um, is f far more than the, any mitigation fee the city actually get. But that's a reality. We can change that and still welcome the project. We're really happy to approve that. And thank you. Apple for being in the city and to continue to provide us this really great uh, lead goal, uh, great project. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Chow, for the comment. And uh, if there are no comments, I'd like to go for a vote, please. Let's vote by light. The motion carries unanimously. Okay, so. Um, Congratulations. Let's hope we'll build a good building for us and let the residents can enjoy it. Thank you very much. And I'd like to ask the council, do you need a five minutes break? Okay, let's take a five minutes break. <laughs> 